either philosophy makes little sense or I'm just a little stupid. Welcome, my mere mortalites, to another round of the Mere Mortals book reviews. My name is Kyron, host of the Mere Mortals podcast, but I also host this one where I dive deeper into the books that I've been reading to give you a review, a summary of the interesting, juicy information that you can perhaps take out, apply to your own everyday life, or just in general what the book's about. And indeed, we do have today a philosophical book I was reading Either or by Soren Kierkegaard or Surin Kierkegaard or Surin, I have no idea how you pronounce that name in Danish. This book was published in 1843 and it's about 600 pages in length with some pretty close type as well. So it'll take you a fair length of time to get through. And I just do want to say here right at the start that I didn't manage to read it all. There's quite a few reasons for that. But if you're someone who needs to have your reviewer to have read every single word and deconstructed every single thing, well, then maybe you should pass on to another book review. But this is a two volume work designed to investigate two different life views. The first is what you would call the aesthetic. So think of things like art, beauty, pleasure, those sorts of mm, ideals, I guess. And then the other is the more ethical. So this is concerning things closer to commitment, marriage, God, and morals, things like that. And we have it in the two different volumes that we, we have. And the actual creation of this work is definitely a little bit odd. So it has kind of two authors and an editor and uh, and a pseudonymous editor, I should say. So the part one, so this is the first life view of the aesthetic is called containing the papers of A. And then it has things like the Dipal Samada, the immediate erotic stages of the musical erotic, ancient tragedies, reflection in the modern, shadow graphs, the unhappiest one, crop rotation, and the seducer's diary. So this is where he's really going into yeah the art, pleasure, beauty sort of things. And it's, this is written by a, an author called A, um, apart from the last one, The Seducer's Diary, which is from another person called oh, Johannes, I believe, Johannes the Seducer. And then part two is the more ethical one. And so this is written by a person called Judge Wilhelm or Judge William. And this is containing the papers of B, letters to A. So he's writing to his friend, the, the creator of the first part. And this is things like the aesthetic validity of marriage, equilibrium between the aesthetic and the ethical in the development of personality. Jesus. Last word and the edifying in the thought that against God, we are always in the wrong and that'll get you right to the end of the book. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, so it's written as life views and letters uh, with, I guess, the ultimate question being how should one live or that's kind of the beneath the surface thing because none of this is really written in kind of a philosophical way to someone. And this is getting, I guess, into the author and perhaps the the way that the book was written. So it was published pseudonymously under a, another name. I believe it was like Victoria Eritgard or something like that, some, some Latin name. But in a way where it was designed to also highlight, okay, if you connect a couple of dots, it's pretty obvious that it was Kierkegaard who, who wrote this. And it's not particularly his ideas in a way because he's got these multiple levels of kind of, I don't know if you'd call it a shielding perhaps. So he's got, you know, an imaginary author, Um, writing to another imaginary author with these letters being expanded upon by an imaginary editor who found all of these imaginary letters. So it's, it's a, it's kind of like a complicated setup to what you you'll find actually contained within. And this will get me onto my one and only theme for today. And this is the either or um, a seemingly unavoidable choice between two alternatives. So I'm just going to give you a description of kind of the two lives that are contained within and because I, I really don't have that much to add on onto the actual themes. And once again, I'll, I'll talk more about this in the um, personal observation section. So if I go on, over to here, the Dipal Samada and the immediate erotic stages of the musical erotic, a lot of this is him talking about Mozart and in particular Don Giovanni and why perhaps the the musical form um, expressed on stage is a much better method of communication than the written form or oral communication between two people. 
and you know or, or um, a an opera is better than a stage play or things like this uh, he's got another section upon uh, unhappiness so this is really just diving into you know who who gets the right to call themselves the unhappiest i think it's kind of hard to decipher exactly what was going on with that one there's love there's boredom a crop rotation is related to an argument i guess of why you want to change different aspects of your life and don't want to be tied down to anything because boredom is kind of like the ultimate killer in life and you uh, you can avoid this boredom by um, being really willing to be flexible on your ideas and your morals and changing up all the time, things like that. And then the seducer's diary, which was of this guy, uh, Johannes, the seducer, who um, is basically courting this young girl called Cordelia and it's an exchange of letters kind of between the two of them. And then finally, when he has seduced her right and proper, has sex with her, and then is like, <laughs> all right, work done here. I'm, I'm off. Catch a bay. And, <laughs> and it's, a, it's a very brutal, brutal um, kind of almost sadistic type of thing. But there's a lot of emotional writing about how, you know, was she the one who got seduced? Was she the seducer? Should she have known this has happened? How could she love someone who she knew was going to do, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of things like that. And then the or section is Judge Wilhelm. And so he's writing to A, basically saying, look, you need to <clears throat> temper some of these things that you've got going on. And this is why my marriage, for example, is introducing all of these, you know, positive benefits to my life. The instruction, uh, you know, it's kind of like arbitrary restrictions of marriage and God of commitment and that that can kind of temper you and that makes a life more pleasurable and things like this <clears throat> i suppose my just one thing of this was does it need to be an unavoidable choice you know the whole framing of the book is either or you know either it's sunny outside or it's rainy well what if you have a sun shower and it's sunny and rainy you know that kind of question just arises in my mind which is just does it does it have to be such such a restrictive choice between these two kind of lives can you also enjoy life and and have pleasure without having to be super restrictive on yourself and things like this you know i'm i'm not <clears throat> i'm not going to really pick a side either way and i don't want to pick a side apart from johannes the seducer uh i, I would have said everyone in there seemed to have an okay life. I don't know. It's it's kind of hard because they're all imaginary and they're all kind of just talking about random topics. There was no sort of circuit focused line. And <clears throat> I'm already introducing my own observation of takeaway. So here we go. Full full bore into it now. So I have several critiques around philosophy, I should say. And I don't want to bring them up here and and talk about them in this book review so I will just say if you're interested in my general thoughts of philosophy after reading many philosophical books over this last year so I'm talking about things like Beyond Good and Evil by Niche, The Question Concerning Technology from uh, the uh, Heidegger, um, some uh, ethics and stuff relating to some Greek kind of work, some more modern stuff like Derek Parfit's uh, Reasons and Persons, all, all of that if you if you want to know my general outcome of what what that was, I would just say check out episode three hundred and twenty six titled "Philosophy Books" of the Mere Mortals podcast, and you'll get all that within there. On to this one though, I'm just going to say much of it was incomprehensible. So I've highlighted a little section here, which was on page ninety three. This was related to Don Giovanni and him talking about, I suppose, Mozart's music, and so to quote. The contradiction in the first day lay in the fact that desire could acquire no object but was in possession of its object without having desired it and therefore could not reach the point of desiring. In the second stage, the object appears in its multiplicity, but since desire seeks its object in this multiplicity, in a deeper sense, it still has no object it has not yet specified as desire. What the fuck? <laughs> that is kind of my general... That... What, whatever you got from me just reading that there, maybe you understood that. Maybe it needed the context of the you know previous nine, 93 pages to, to really understand that. All I can just say is that is how the whole book felt to me. It felt just un incomprehensible. I would, I would be reading it and just go, 
I, I don't I don't get it. I don't I don't see what's trying to be said here. And so that that was one point. The other point was, um, you know, he was talking about boredom in this book and crop rotation. Holy fuck, was I bored while whilst reading it? The the incomprehensibility just left a lack of of interest on my part. So I really wanted to to read it. Like I, it's been part of my goals. Come on, read some philosophy books. I know they're meant to be hard. I know you're going to have to focus and concentrate and really really try. And I, I've tried, but the the wording of that is is so vague and you know i can understand individual words but when you start talking about a multiplicity of objects desire i i it just goes over me it, it totally goes over me so they they didn't hit the mark for me so de- definitely needed some more crop rotation in this book <laughs> now there's other things like it's too poetic maybe maybe i'm too stupid to understand i I'm, i can fully be on board with me not not uh, having the iq or perhaps it's even the medium or perhaps it's the i don't know what you'd call it the the style perhaps maybe it's too danish for me um another one on page 198 which i thought was kind of enlightening in a way was where this girl was talking about geez can't even remember what she was talking yeah she was talking about um, being deceived and so this was a girl who was being deceived by giovanni and then, you know, then she's just questioning her own decision-making and things. So to quote, no, I cannot think of him. Every time my thoughts approach that hiding place in my soul where his memory dwells, it is as if I committed a sin. I feel an anguish, an inexpressible anguish, an anguish like that I felt in the convent when I sat in my solitary cell waiting for him. Terrified of the thought of the prioress's stern contempt, the convent's terrible punishment, my crime against God. And yet, wasn't this anguish part of it? What would my love for him have been without it? After all, he was not consecrated to me. We had not received the blessing of the church. The bells had not tolled for us. The hymn had not been sung. And yet, what were all the music and festivity of the church? This goes on and on. And that kind of, I'm I'm all on board with introspection and, and looking at my own actions and things like that. But this this girl just seemed to create this whole world of, questioning every single action was he the seducer was i the seducer was him seducing me part of my seduction of like it just just kind of spirals down and goes goes nowhere goes nowhere so um maybe danish people are different <laughs> and these are just how danish people think but yeah i i uh, i didn't get much of it so getting just i suppose as a summary in my personal observations takeaways uh, to my opening line, you know, either philosophy makes little sense or I'm stupid. You know, it's an either or, or maybe it's both. Maybe it's just, it is a very difficult, hard to read work, which is kind of poetic in ways, which is can be interpreted in a bunch of different ways. And I don't have the capability of interpreting that. I'm, I'm fully uh, willing to accept that that's a, <laughs> a strong possibility. So going to my overall summary, my overall feeling coming out of this was just an exasperated why. Why, Kierkegaard, why? There was lots of words, but it didn't feel like that I got much of the gist of it. It used a way of speaking writing that just it, it just simply passed over me. I don't, I don't think I can add more to that. The, the either or, the question, the philosophical things, they didn't have a chance to arise. And, you know, I like I mentioned, I, I, I had to give up. I just could not keep going through it. So I read most of the either part. I read little snippets of the or part and I just didn't understand anything. Um, it left me bored. So there we go. <laughs> Overall, I'm going to give it a, a two out of 10. Uh, the either or by Soren Kierkegaard, <laughs> not for me. And I really hope that you get something more out of it than I did. And I'm going to leave it there for today. My Mimor Lights, thank you for joining me to this part of the video. Have you read Kierkegaard's Either Or? What are your impressions, your thoughts on the book? Uh, did you get what? Just what did you get out of it? And could you understand it? Those are those are my two questions, comments for you. So if you can leave a comment, that would be really awesome. If not, um, I would also just recommend a little highlight for me in my little call to action, if you want to put it that way, is to yeah give give some feedback and then also just a, a reminder that there is an audio version of this. And in the audio version, you can help support out the show 
uh, through payments of Bitcoins. It's uh, very complicated, lots of stuff going on there. So just go check out the Mere Mortals podcast and you'll get the gist of, of how we do that. And other than that, I really hope you're having a fantastic day. Either you're having a fantastic day or you're not in the world. <laughs> Kyron out.